Hi, welcome to our latest Facebook Live. We're going to, as we normally do, talk a little bit for a few minutes, wait for people to join us. Um, we're going to be talking about Changes' free suicide first aid course that we're offering to everybody in Stoke on Trent. So, we're here for any questions you've got, how do you book on to it, what is it about. You get to meet Liz, who's the trainer for the program as well. Hello. So we're just going to just wait and talk for a bit. Good morning, Lorraine. Good morning, Lorraine. Hope you have a nice holiday. So we're going to wait for a bit for people to come and join us. So there's five people watching at the minute. So I'm just going to give a couple more minutes. So if you want to just drop a hi in the messages so we know that you're there and we can say hi back. Um, I'll just introduce myself a little bit. So I'm Liz and um, I've worked at Changes for about 13 years, but um, in 2020 I actually retired. So um, some people might remember me. Um, so I've worked here for quite a long time and done a whole variety of um, training, but um, I'm now back. Um, kind of not full time but just coming and doing some bits and bobs of projects so suicide first aid is kind of my um love really so i'm a qualified suicide first aid instructor um personally got a lot of kind of interest in the topic of suicide um and the prevention of suicide obviously so um it was really great when changes uh, were awarded this funding from public health um for us to offer this training within a six month period to as many people, individuals, businesses, companies um, in Stoke-on-Trent. So anybody can access this training as long as they uh, live or work in the Stoke-on-Trent area. So kind of my thoughts about it is you shouldn't be thinking, oh, should I do this training? It is like, why would I not? Uh, why would you not take up this amazing opportunity to, um, you know, help save a life basically that's what we're doing we're helping people save a life um and i think we've all heard of or been touched by somebody who might have taken their lives by suicide um i think the pandemic has um intensified that people have um struggled a lot with the pandemic and being in and isolated not having um, as much social contact um and i know here kind of we hear quite regularly now about people taking their own life um, on the A500, on the bridges. Um, I was actually kind of out and about on Saturday evening um, and somebody uh, took their life on the railway bridge at Cheddleton on Saturday evening. So, you know, we, we all kind of hear about these things and, um, you know, this is an amazing opportunity for us to gain some skills really on how we spot the signs that somebody might be um, having thoughts of suicide and what can we do, how can we help, what's the intervention um, and, you know, the intervention is really easy, it's really simple, um, it doesn't take long to do the intervention, um, so that's kind of what we're going to talk about if anybody's got any questions or anything they want to ask about. Yep. So, hi Lisa, hi Adrian and hi Stig. Nice uh, of you to join us today. So, as you said, this is funded by Stoke-on-Trent Council Public Health. Yeah. Yeah, and it's open to anybody who lives in or works in Stoke-on-Trent. That's right. There's two variants of the programme, isn't there? There's a full day uh, suicide first aid and there's a suicide first aid light yeah that's right so uh, we're offering both um, both are amazing um, obviously the suicide first aid full day um, goes into a lot more detail um, it gives a lot more depth um, and at the end of that training you can then go on privately um, to apply to do a suicide first aid sitting girls qualification so it's £85 for the course, which I know is quite a lot of money and not everybody will have that. So you can access the training and you don't have to do that, but that is an option if you are a professional or it was a company um, and they may want maybe like their HR rep to go on to gain the qualification. It's a level four city and guild qualification. 
Um, and then we do a three and a half hour light version. So within that, you still um, will know how to spot the signs. You will still know how to have a conversation and ask the question if somebody is having thoughts of suicide and you will know what the um, prevention plan is. Um, so it's still really valuable, still really useful, but obviously um, we're trying to cater to everybody. Um, you know, some people might have the time to do the full day and some people might only be able to um, do the three and a half hours, but both are really important. Yeah, and where possible, we're going to try to do the courses face to face. That's a better way of doing it. But we know that it's not not everybody can make the time to, to come into a, a training venue. It's not easy. So we are going to try and if there's a need for it and people ask for it, we are going to put on online sessions as well. Only of the half day one. I think it's too much. For, we think it's too yeah. much for the full day. But for the half day, three and a half hour one, some Zoom training or Teams training, whatever's preferred. Um, there may, again, if there's a demand for it, there's a need for it, for the, the half day live version, might not be able to do an evening session. That would need to start at around six o'clock at the very latest, or else we'll be going on till midnight. I'm sure nobody wants that, least of all Liz. <laughs> um, so Steve's asked, how do you approach a person who you think is suicidal? Okay, so obviously there's no definitive answer to that question. Um, but what the evidence proves and what we do know is that a person who is having thoughts of suicide wants you to ask the question. One of the other things we know is that uh, most people who are contemplating suicide don't actually want to die. They want the pain that they're in to stop. And at that moment in time, that person hasn't got um, the ability to rationally think about what those options might be. So if we have an inkling that somebody might be thinking about suicide, we need to ask the question. And there's various ways to ask the question, but the most important thing is, is that we need to be confident, clear and concise. So we need to, this is an example, it's only one example. Um, hi Chris. Um, You've told me that lately you've been struggling with a variety of things and um, I've noticed that you're not yourself. So I just want to ask, are you actually having thoughts of suicide, Chris? So that's a difficult thing to ask and some people are really worried about asking that question because they think if the person wasn't having thoughts of suicide, we've now planted that seed. But that's a myth. Um, it's like if I said to Chris, Chris, are you going to give me your monthly salary this month? He was having no thoughts of it and just because I've said it, he's not going to now give it me. So we can't plant that seed if it's not already there. So we ask in the way that we're comfortable, but we ask clearly, concisely and confidently. And we ask because the person wants us to ask. They don't want to die by suicide. They want somebody to intervene, to ask the question, which then gives them permission to talk about what's going on for them. Hope that's okay, Stig. Okay. Again, if anybody's got any questions, if you want to just drop them in the chat, we'll do our best to answer it. Obviously, with the full day course and the half day course, we'll answer a lot more of the questions as, as you've got. So this is just a light, very light touch, just as a bit of an introduction if you to find out a little bit more. Um, how do people book in? Okay. Interested? Yeah, so if you're interested, um, you can contact me directly uh, via my uh, email or you can contact us here at Changes. Um, and we've got some open courses running here at Changes. Um, we've got two uh, half days and we are running a full day. Unfortunately, the full day is full for now because I'm only allowed to take 16 people on the full day because of safety and I can uh, have 20 people on the light. So on the 16th of November, we've got a light version and we've still got places available for that. And we've also got a light version on the 10th of November um, and there's still places on that. So again, if you're interested, you can um, contact Changes 
um, and speak to Lorraine uh, and she will kind of um, feed that information or you can contact me directly. Yeah, so drop some of those details into the chat if anybody's watching this back later on. So if you want to just email, ask any questions or to book on, it's SFA Suicide First Aid at changes.org.uk. You can phone in the office 01782 411 As Liz said, on the 16th of November, on the 10th of November, we've got two, uh, two training sessions on the light with spaces still, if you'd like to get involved. Um, and if people are really interested in the full day, then still please contact us because obviously um, if we know that we have got people who want to do the full day, then we can arrange another date yeah. um, and, and make that happen. The funding is available till April next year, so obviously if there's any businesses or companies that want me to come in and deliver the training for their staff team, then we've, we've you know, we, we know Christmas is a busy time and... Um, but we, we've still got, you know, till next April. So we've got a little bit of time to make sure that we can, you know, run as many of these courses as possible. Yeah, and if you just want to phone up or email, just leave a, a name and a de contact details. Liz will get back in touch yeah. when the next sessions are being set. This is just what's coming up in the next few weeks. Okay. Okay. Have you got any statistics to hand about suicide? Um, yeah, so we can share a few kind of facts and figures. Um, so we're thinking about young females under the age of 25. Um, the uh, incidence of suicide has increased uh, by 93% since 2012. So younger people are now um, ending their lives by suicide a lot more, um, which is very, very worrying. Uh, men aged between 45 and 49 are at the most risk um, of completing suicide um, and women be aged between 50 and 54 are also at higher risk um, of completing suicide. And the kind of um, Nash, the figures kind of if we think about in, in England, 18 people a day um, complete suicide. So I think that kind of puts it into perspective that this, they're not, I don't know whether you say the huge figures, but I think the thing with suicide is every death by suicide is preventable. So those are kind of 18 deaths a day that if people, there was more suicide training out there and people were more um, able to spot the signs and uh, feel confident to do a suicide intervention, we could prevent, you know, those 18 deaths and I think that's the key thing that death by suicide is preventable um, so yeah so those are kind of where we're at with um, suicide first aid and I think currently if you looked at the statistics they would show that suicide has decreased but because of the pandemic um, and lots of people are um, on their death certificates it's because of Covid um, I think what the statistics is, is suggesting is those figures are a little bit skewed, that actually death by suicide has increased, but the statistics are not showing that because of the COVID pandemic and people kind of um, having that on their death certificates. Okay, so we've got a hi of Jojo Mojo. Hi Jo. And Stig has asked, what support can be offered to someone after the question is asked and they are suicidal? Okay, so again, there's no kind of definitive answer, but the suicide first aid training tries to give you um, a strategy to use. So um, the step one, it's a three-step um, strategy, so it, it's not complex, it's not difficult to kind of remember once you've done the training. So step one is recognise and ask. So we've just kind of covered that, haven't we? That we've recognised that somebody may be struggling and may be having thoughts of suicide and we've asked the question. So step two is listen and explore. So we need to listen to the person's experiences, how they're feeling, where their head's at, what's going on for them. We need to um, explore and gain as much information at that point as possible. Because, you know, we need to use all of our skills. When we talk about listening, 
you know, we all think, oh yeah, well, we listen. But the key thing with listening is we listen with our eyes, we listen with our hearts, and we listen with our heads. We don't listen with our mouths. So if we're doing lots and lots of talking, we're not actively listening. So it's important that we give the time, the person the time to really talk about what's going on for them. We need to clarify that we've heard it. So what I've heard you say, Chris, is, and feed that back. So just to make sure, because we, this person's in a very emotional, vulnerable state. So we need to clarify that the information that we've heard is correct. Um, and once we've done that, we can move on to step three, which is safeguarding that person. And what we need to do with safeguarding that person is put a suicide prevention plan in place. So one thing that I want to say is lots of people are very scared about being handed the suicide ball. So I've asked Chris the question and he says, yes, I am having thoughts of suicide. And now it's natural for me to think, oh, my God, like, what do I do with this? I don't want to be left with this all day. I, 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 you know, I've got things that I need to do and I'm... So it's natural to be worried. And the whole point of the suicide first aid training is to say, listen, you're doing an intervention. So if you think about it a little bit like a paramedic, if somebody had passed out on the street um, and, and you went and you helped and you'd bring emergency services, you would that would be your little piece of that intervention. You'd stay with that person. Um, you might intervene, you might do something, but you'd ring 999, the professionals would come and then you walk away from that situation. And it's similar to that with suicide first aid. It's not for us once we've asked the question to then be with that person and be responsible that person for the whole day, for the whole night, for the whole week. So we sit and we put a suicide prevention plan in place. If the person is at very immediate risk, so we, it's somebody on the bridge, obviously we would call emergency services and when emergency services came we would then step away we've done our bit as a suicide first aider but if this is somebody within our workplace a friend a family member and we ask the question and they say yes then it might be that we talk about what can we do now to keep you safe so lots of people who are thinking about suicide at that moment in time think they've got two options. My options are to live or to die. That's not the case. What we do as a suicide first aider is we give them another option. The option is to pause. You don't have to make the decision whether it's life or death right at this minute. We need to pause. We need to think about what your options are. And when we're putting the safety suicide plan together, that's what we're doing. That might be contacting a family member, it might be contacting a friend, it might be contacting the GP. You having given your time and showed that person that you care, that might be enough with a suicide first aid plan. That person might feel that actually they're okay now, they're safe to be left. So there's no kind of um, easy answer to that, but I think that plan shows you that actually there's just three things. And when we have to put that suicide plan together, we go back, we check. So this is what we've agreed, Chris. You're going to contact the GP, um, your friend, you've called Lorraine. Lorraine's going to come around this evening, just sit with you and make sure you're okay this evening. These are the things we've agreed. Yes. Do you remember that, Chris? Yeah. Right. Okay. So let's put that in place. And then we remove ourselves from that situation because we've done our job as a suicide first aider. So I hope that's answered that question. Thank you. Jojo, thanks for sharing. I, do you feel able to private messages or to phone us at the office on 411, 413? And um, we'll try and talk to you directly. There's a, normally a 10, 20 second lag. We are a bit behind everybody. Okay. Yeah, and, and the thing when we talk about suicide is, you know, it does evoke some um, emotions and it, and it is a, you know, a very difficult thing to kind of talk about. So, you know, this is an example of why I like to do the training in person, really. I think because um you know suicide is a, is a difficult subject to talk about people have been touched by it either themselves or family members um i think it is always as far as possible good to do the training in person because if somebody is struggling then um obviously we can support them um 
so yeah so we're just kind of doing that right now supporting somebody who um needs a bit of a bit, a bit of support with this with this topic there we go i've popped it in the message joe it's 01782 uh, hopefully that'll either be Lorraine or Christine who pick up the phone to you. I think the other thing I just want to um, kind of just mention really, if anybody is worried about doing the Suicide First Aid training because they may have been touched by suicide in, in some way or other, we do not, when we're doing the suicide training, talk about means. It isn't an environment where we share experiences about suicide. We don't talk about means. It's not graphic in any way. The whole point of the suicide first aid training is to give the individual on the training the confidence and skills, if they ever were faced with a situation where they needed to use them, that they feel more able and that they feel more able to recognize the signs in somebody they know what to look out for um so i just kind of wanted to say that that um you know i'm very aware um that it is a very difficult subject so you know when people are doing the training you can kind of get up and take five minutes um if if you find it difficult at any time but just to reassure people that we don't, it's not a therapy session, it's a training session, it's education. So we, we don't get into talking about the means of suicide or any graphic um, information around suicide at all. It is a safe environment. Is there any, anything particular about the language you use around suicide that's helpful? Yeah, I mean, language has changed as it changes with everything. If we think about kind of how language has changed around mental health. So, you know, when we do the mental health first aid, we do an exercise about language and we talk about some of the negative ways we describe people who've got a mental health condition. Um, and how that they're not really acceptable anymore. So being a loony tune, being crazy, you know, those are the words that were used and, and now, you know, that's not appropriate at all. So things move on and that's the same for suicide. So lots of people, and even now when you see suicide reported in the press, people will say the person committed suicide. Um, Suicide is not an illegal act. <laughs> it hasn't been an illegal act for a long, long time. And the word committed makes you think that somebody's committed a crime. So when we think about families who've lost somebody by suicide, they actually do find it quite hurtful when that is referred to as their son committed suicide. They committed an offence. So the way that we talk about suicide now um, is we talk about, you know, um completing suicide so we don't say committed we we use the word completed suicide or death by suicide um and again we talk about that on the on the training um, we try and kind of encourage people to use a more kind of appropriate language but you know committing suicide has been around forever so we don't expect that that's going to change overnight but again it's just about education and getting people to think about maybe the impact of that language on somebody who has just lost somebody yeah it's a good yeah. question chris thank you Liz. and don as you said it's fantastic that we have this opportunity to access this training in stoke on trent yeah absolutely i said it again it's funded by stoke on trent city council and it's a free training to anybody who lives in Stoke-on-Trent or works in Stoke-on-Trent. Uh, he said, as I think we've sort of touched on, it's as important as your normal health and safety and your normal first aiders in a, you have in every business, you have first aiders everywhere you go. So this is just as important. And what I says, why, why ask the question, why should I do this? It should be, why wouldn't I do this course? It's free, it can save a life. Why wouldn't you do this course? Own a business or work in a business, you got any staff that want to come onto this free training? So, you'll be here for six months, brilliant opportunity. Why not make the most of it? 
And even if you've kind of watched this um, and you don't think it's appropriate for you, if we could just ask you to kind of pass it on, really. So again, change your uh, step 12, pass it on. Um, if, you know, talk about it, um, mention it to people because, you know, we need to get this word out that this is available. I mean, we're going to post this um, on Twitter and we're going to post it on Instagram and put it out to as many places. I did a little interview with um, Signal Radio um, last week. So it is just about getting the message out there to as many people so that we can get as many people in Stoke-on-Trent trained up, get them these skills and hopefully help save lives. Hi Joe. this particular course, there's only funded in Stoke-on-Trent. Um, uh, changes health and well-being here, the, the page that you're on now, we operate in North Staffordshire. We do have a sister organisation in Changes Tamworth. Um, if you want to, again, either private messages some contact details or give us a call here, uh, we can pass your details on to Changes Tamworth. Um, they're, they're probably obviously closer to you and be able to support you better than, than we can up in, in Stoke. Uh, but we'll do what we can. So if you need to speak to somebody, say Lorraine or Christine, we'll be happy to have a chat with you today. There's no problem in that. Okay, is there anybody any any questions? We're going to be on for another another three or four minutes. So there's a chance if you've got any questions while we are live. Uh, again, remember this: we are recording this live at the minute. If you are watching this back at a later time, if you just private messages or email any questions you might have, because um, it would be hard to pick up on sometimes if you type them in the chat thinking that we'll pick them up. Um, Changes is a fantastic charity and help many people. Can't argue with that stick, thank you. <laughs> um, I'll just, while we've got a couple of minutes, um, just mention something else that when I've been delivering suicide first aid training, um, just a, a kind of question or a, a comment that's often we often end up talking about, um, and people will say, "But well, there was no signs," um, in, or people will say, "Yeah, kind of in hindsight now, I look back, why didn't I recognise that?" And there's some guilt attached if somebody's died by suicide and it's a family member and you didn't see the signs, people feel kind of guilt attached to that. But at the end of the day, if we're not trained in something, if we haven't got the information, then we, don't, we shouldn't be feeling guilty about not recognising um, that somebody might be thinking about suicide. So that's, a, you know, again, another good reason to do the training because we talk about what the signs are, you know. And what we say is if you have one inkling that somebody is struggling don't be fearful of asking the question so some people might think oh yeah Chris doesn't see me himself today but I won't ask the question because he's just had an off day and what we would say as part of suicide first aid training is just ask the question you know if you're worried about somebody um, then there's no problem with asking the question um, there are signs um, you know, people do show signs, whether they show them consciously or un unconsciously. Um, but if you haven't been on training, then you're not going to know how to recognise those signs. So again, that's another really good reason to uh, attend the training um, so that you are then in a place where, you know, whether you're out and about shopping or having a cost of coffee or you're at work or it's a family member, it will just kind of tweak your radar and you might think oh I remember that from suicide first day this person's experiencing a b and c I feel like maybe I ought to ask the question and if that person had no thoughts of suicide the worst that you've done is let that person know that if you ever ever were you're the person to come to that's the worst you can do yeah Claire said thanks for doing this you're welcome, you're welcome. So just remember this video is just about our the free suicide first aid full day program and uh, suicide first aid live. We've got lots of other support that changes. Um, if you have to something more on a day-to-day -day basis, just visit us at www.changes.org.uk. You can see everything that we do there from adults to children and young people. Um, you see all of that other courses and peer support, everything's on there. 
Uh, but again, this is just about the suicide first aid and suicide first aid light, which is a free full day or half day course for Stoke-on-Trent residents and for people who work in Stoke-on-Trent or volunteer in the Stoke-on-Trent organisation. On this particular, so if you want to book an obviously knowledgeable list, <laughs> um, you just email SFA, stands for Suicide First Aid, SFA at changes.org.uk, or you can just telephone us on 01782 411 433, and those details are in the chat. If you, we've got to put some availabilities in there, but again, if you just want to be, leave us your name and contact details, Liz will get back in touch with you when the next dates are set, or if we're doing some Zoom training or anything, just let us know what sort of availability you've got, when you can do it, and we'll set, try and work up some programmes around what, what the need is and when people can make it. So, so what question would you ask, How? Okay, so... I don't know if you've logged on, um, Claire, um, a little bit later, um, but I'll just go over this very quickly again. So Claire's asked, what question would you ask and how? So if somebody, you think somebody's having thoughts of suicide, then what we said is you need to be clear, confident and concise um, because that person needs to feel that you are confident uh, and that you're ready for them to give you the answer. And you need to ask in a way that's comfortable for you. So there are kind of suggestions. So what I always do, um, and, you know, I have been in this situation a, a few times, is I use the thing that's worried me to ask the question. So I keep using Chris, who hasn't got thoughts of suicide, just so you know that. Um, I would say, Chris, you haven't seen yourself recently. You've seemed really quiet and you've been isolating yourself. I know you're having a tough time at the moment. So I just want to ask you, Chris, are you having thoughts of suicide? So very confident, very clear, very concise. Just ask the question. And if Chris was having thoughts of suicide, he would want me to ask the question. He wants to be able to talk to somebody about how he's feeling because the evidence shows that people who have thoughts of suicide do not want to die. They want their pain to stop. And as a suicide first aider, we can help them press the pause button, not make the decision between life and death, and we can put that suicide three-step safety plan into place and help save that person's life. And just to answer your next couple of questions, this is funded by Stoke-on-Trent City Council, so it is only available for either people who live in Stoke-on-Trent or work or volunteer for an organisation that's based in Stoke-on-Trent. I think I know who you are, Claire, so I think you volunteer for us. I could be wrong on that, but I do, and I apologise. So, Changes as an organisation based in Stoke-on-Trent, so you could access it, but if you speak to Lorraine, she'll be able to help you in more details with that one and funding is really frustrating you know we would love to be uh, offering suicide first aid across yeah. everywhere you know it, it, and it frustrates us here it changes as much as it frustrates everybody else you know we're absolutely thankful that we've got this in Stoke-on-Trent but it is frustrating that we can't go out to Lee Newcastle or anywhere else um, but you know there's nothing we can do about that. We just have to seize every opportunity um, that we get. Yeah, I mean, absolute worst case scenario, if anybody's listening to this who is outside of Stoke-on-Trent, doesn't live in Stoke-on-Trent or doesn't work or volunteer for an organisation or a business within Stoke-on-Trent, we do have a suicide prevention awareness programme through our adult and community learning, which is not post-coded and that's accessible to everybody. Um, so if you don't fall within the definitions for this particular program, there is another option. Again, you just get in touch uh, directly and we can answer you, get, get you in the right place. Okay, uh, you're welcome, Claire. Okay, so on that, we're going to draw this to a close. Again, any questions, any details for booking, SFA stands for Suicide First Aid, sfa at changes.org.uk or give us a call on 01782 411 433 or just private messages with any questions and 
if we can't answer, if I can't answer them, I'll pass them on to Liz. So thank you everybody for watching. Yeah, thank you. Um, really appreciate it. And again, just please pass this information on to as many people as you can. Let's get the word out there. Let's get as many people, organisations trained up in suicide first aid. Stay safe, everybody. Yeah. And again, if you can like and share this video to all your contacts, that'd be absolutely brilliant as well. Send it far and wide within Stoke Contract. But that'd be great. Thank, thank you, everybody. You. Bye, thank everybody. You. Bye, bye. bye.